And there is Facebook. Good afternoon, everyone. Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. And i um, always excited to come and share the word of God with the body of Christ. And <clears throat> always excited and humble to be used by God. Now, please like and share this video. Whenever God releases a prophetic word, it needs to go around the world. There are people that need to hear it and people that are going to be blessed by it. Okay, and a couple times, the Holy Ghost has shown me that some people would make the choice not to end their lives when they hear a word from the Lord. Not from me, David, but from the Lord. When they hear a word from the Lord, it would stop some people from ending their lives. That's how important the prophetic word is. You know why? Because the preached word normally goes out to a, a broader audience, but the prophesied word is God talking to you. Okay? The preached word is often God talking to us, but the prophesied word is God talking to you. Okay? And there's no substitute for the prophesied word of God. Hold on, I've got to set this other recording up. Uh, and there we go. Okay? So again, when you come on uh, to this video, if you're watching me live, please like and share this video. If you're watching me on the replay on Facebook Live, Periscope, Twitter, YouTube, please like and share there too. Because I will. to you okay it's personal and it will pierce down past your deepest emotions down in your soul down to your heart down to the the marrow in your bones is what the word of god will do so that's why when there's a prophetic word going forth it's not my word it's the holy ghost you need to like and share the video as much as possible because again i will say the spirit of god has has told me more than once that <clears throat> sometimes the prophesied word helps people not to end their lives. Okay? So it's possible that God's word could help prevent suicide. Did you ever think about that? So please like and share this video, okay, whenever you come on. Now, I'm going to pray, <clears throat> and we're going to jump right in. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much, oh God. Thank you for being my father. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being an example of a father because you're faithful every day. You give us grace every day. You're stable. You're consistent. You never change. You're loving. Your mercies are fresh and new every day. And you're just wonderful, Lord. And there aren't enough words for me to describe your goodness. And I just want to thank you for letting me be a part of your kingdom. I ask you now, right now, God, to fill me with the Holy Ghost to speak through me. So fill my mind, my heart, my, my, my brain, my, my lips, my teeth, my tongue, my and just feel every part of me, O oh God, so you can breathe through me, so that your prophesied word can go forth and speak to whoever you want it to speak to, that you might get the glory in all things, that we might establish your eternal, <clears throat> your eternal kingdom and tear down the kingdom, kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of that which is temporal, that which is based on lies, that which is from Satan. Let's tear that down, O oh God, so we can establish your kingdom, because your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. And I thank you for letting us all be a part of it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. <clears throat> amen and amen. Now, <clears throat> as you know, I am on uh, every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, and I'm on the second Thursday of the month at 7 o'clock p.m. with a series called No More Genies. Okay, so I strongly encourage that you go back and catch up on all the No More Genies series for this year. And then uh, I have, you know, several for last year, for 2018 as well. And then you can watch all the prophetic words that I've been releasing every week. But 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time every Sunday is my regular time. And on the second Thursday of every month, uh, I do uh, No More Genies. And so in October, I would be doing No More Genies on October 10th at 7 p.m. Okay? But let's jump into what God has for us today. And today's prophetic word is... Light my path. Light my path. We're going to look at our scripture reference. Our scripture reference is Psalm 119 and 105. The book of Psalms is right in the middle of the Bible. It's one of the top three biggest books in the Bible. Isaiah and Jeremiah are 
is bigger than Psalms, uh, but Psalm is one of the top three right in the middle. Mostly music written by David, Asaph, some by Moses, some by Sol Solomon. There's more than one writer of the Psalms. It's not just King David. So <clears throat> uh, we're going to read Psalm, the 119th chapter, verse 105. And it reads, out of the New King James Version, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Uh, Christian Standard Bible, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Contemporary English version, your word is a lamp that gives light wherever I walk. New International Version, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. And I want to read the New Living Translation. <clears throat> your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Okay. So it seems like the thoughts are clear, so hopefully we can dive a little deeper and you can hear and discover some things that you haven't hear, heard or discovered before. The first thing I want to say is the first part of that verse goes, your word is a lamp to my feet. Stop. What did the Bible just tell you? The Bible just told you that you need light on your feet when you walk through life. If you don't have light on your feet when you walk through life, then you won't know what you're doing, okay? If the Bible tells you that his word is a lamp, that means the converse is also true. That means the absence of his word is the absence of a lamp. What that means in practical terms is that if you are not getting in God's word every day, and allowing his word to show you how to make your, make your decisions and make your choices, you are literally walking in darkness. But he says, your word, your word, meaning God's word. And some of the other, all the other translations say your, is, your word as well, okay? Why is that so important? Because there are many voices in the world you can listen to, not just God Almighty, Okay. Now, Dr. I.V. Hilliard, I want to be sure I give him credit for this. Dr. I.V. Hilliard has a brilliant teaching, brilliant teaching, and he talks about the voices that show up <clears throat> when you make a decision. He says, whenever you get ready to make a decision, at that table there is the voice of the Lord, the voice of the devil, the voice of your flesh, and the voice of your own mind. Wow, voice of the Lord, voice of the devil, voice of your flesh, and voice of your own mind. And those are not all the same voice at all. Your flesh is different from your mind, your brain, your sense of self, your personality. And there's the devil, what he's trying to say, and then there's the Lord. Every time you make a decision. Why, why am I bringing that up now? Because it says your word, your word. So in other words, you are going to have to train yourself to ignore uh, any other voices that would be against God word, God's word, but the four you have to deal with when you come to the table, the voice of your own mind, you're going to have to learn how to submit what you're thinking to what God is saying. You may not understand what God is saying in the fullness. You may not agree with it. You may not like it. But when it comes to your thinking, you're going to have to learn how to submit what I'm thinking to what God says. The voice of your flesh, what you have to do there is crucify that. Because in your flesh dwells no good thing, and that flesh needs to be crucified, lest it lead you down a wrong path. Then the voice of the devil you rebuke and cast out. Okay? You don't entertain the devil, you don't give place to the devil, you rebuke it and cast it out. And then the voice of God, of course, we HBO, we hear, believe, and obey. Now, I can't, did, did you ever know, did you ever think about how all those voices are present? Whenever you're making a decision. So that's why the scripture says your word, not a word or not words, your word. OK, and that's very important that you understand that that is listening to God that brings the lamp to your feet. Because how many of us have ever gotten a situation where we listen to some other voice? You listen to what people say. Well, you know, they say. Well, you know, they going to talk about me. Or you listen to the voice of somebody you were dating or somebody you thought you were in love with. Okay? Or you listen to the voice of your own lust and your own pride. 
or you try to reason things through with your mind and you try to walk by sight and you try to walk by human intellect and say, well, I don't think I can figure that out, so maybe it's not true. How many times in life have we gotten in trouble and gone down the wrong path because we were listening to his word? <laughs> we were listening to other voices, other words. So that's why it's so important here that it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and, and is a conjunctive word, conjunctive word. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So it looks like I need a lamp on my feet and it looks like I need light on my path. That's two different things. So there's got to be a lamp on my feet so I can see what I'm doing. So I can see where I'm stepping and a light's in my path. But I also need the path illuminated. Do you know why it's so important that you have your path illuminated? Because it's the easiest thing in the world to walk in darkness. Now, let me read you a few verses in the scripture about, well, about walking in darkness. <clears throat> Proverbs 4 and 19. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. Proverbs 2 and 13. For those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. So the Bible's telling you right there that if you get off the upright path, whatever path you get on that's not the upright path is darkness. Okay? Uh, Deuteronomy 28, 29, and you will grope at noon as a blind man gropes in darkness, and you will not prosper in your ways, but you shall only be oppressed and robbed continually with none to save you. Oh my goodness. If you're familiar with Deuteronomy chapter 28, that's the, the great promise chapter where uh, Moses tells the children of Israel if they do everything God is telling them to do, be above only not beneath, they'll be blessed coming in. And bless going out. But people rarely read the curses because after the first 14 verses, Moses tells them what will happen if they don't listen to the Lord. And that's part of it. Part of not listening to the Lord is groping at noon as a blind man gropes in darkness. It means you won't be able to see. And at noon, it means when the sun's at its peak, when the sun's highest, when there's so much light outside, you still won't be able to see. You'll still be blind and you will not prosper in your ways, but you shall only be. picture about what happens when you're not listening to the Lord. Okay, my Facebook just came back on, so let me repeat that. The scripture paints a pretty bleak picture about what happens when you're not listening to the Lord. So the Bible tells us not only do we need a lamp on our feet and a light in our path, but the Bible tells us what happens when we get away from that. Okay, and it's nothing positive. So that ought to tell you just by listening. That if you're not walking in God's word, if you're not spending time in the word of God every day, and you're not letting the word of God be first, be your head, you're not submitting to the word of God and making your decisions, then you're not going to be walking in light. Now, here's the question. Why is that important along through here? What is it the Holy Ghost wanted me to share with people in the right now? Here it is. <clears throat> Many of us have heard the voice of the Lord, we've heard the voice of the bridegroom, and we have entered in. Okay, we kept our lamps full of the oil of the Holy Ghost, and we are moving in step with what Jesus is saying. Many of us has, have entered our own personal promised land. You have crossed over, you have left the world behind that represents Egypt, slavery, bondage, all the ways of the flesh, the impression of the devil and demons, that's the world. You've come through the wilderness. The wilderness is a time of testing, where you are tested to see if you're going to believe God or not. Where you are tested to see if you're going to obey God or not. Where you are tested to see, are you committed to your walk with God or not. But after you leave Egypt and after you come through the wilderness, then there is Canaan, or the promised land. That is not talking about when you die. That's talking about now in this life, becoming all that you're supposed to be having the relationship with God that is healthy and whole and full of faith, 
full of the power of God, full of miracles, full of the signs and wonders that mark a divinely led life, uh, learning how to love yourself, learning how to accept yourself, learning how to be yourself, and then learning how to maximize your potential, maximize your fruitfulness and spend your days bearing fruit and spend your years bringing forth fruit, okay, that, and living your dream, okay, having deep soul satisfaction, having love, joy, and peace down in your soul, and being stable, uh, like my pastor said, my pastor is, issued a challenge either last week or two weeks ago, and he said, if you just got saved last week, or you've been saved like less than two years, he said, I, under, I understand, but if you've been saved a 20 and a 30 years and you're still struggling, <laughs> he said, if you've been saved a 20 and a 30 years and you ain't stable, he said, there's something wrong. So in other words, my pastor was saying, after a significant period of time, you ought to have stabilized in your walk with God and crossed over into the promised land. But I'm sad to say not all Christians do. There's a whole lot of Christians that want to get married that's going to die by themselves because they never learn how to obey God. There's a whole lot of Christians that need finances to live their dream, more money than they have, but they're never going to walk into it because they never learn how to obey God. You've got to cross over. You've got to go all the way in to the promised land. But once you do, then what? And that's what the Holy Ghost wanted, to sh wanted me to show you about these verses today. The, the Spirit of God is saying to those of you that are walking in step with Jesus and have entered your personal promised land, that you still need to stay in the word and keep that word on your feet so you can see how your feet are falling, so you can see what you're doing. It's his word that's a lamp for your feet, that brings the illumination for your feet. And, that's a conjunctive word again, a light unto your path. It's not just your feet that need light. It's your path. Where are you walking? Okay, so we can put it this way. If I'm looking at my feet, I'm looking at how I'm walking. If I look at my path, I'm looking at where I'm walking. Okay? So the scripture says that the word of God shows me how I'm walking, lamp to my feet, where I'm walking, light to my path, and we need both. Okay? Not either or. Okay? You need a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Okay? You need both those two. Okay? Both of those two. Not one or the other, but both. Okay? And so that's the word this week for those of you that are walking in lockstep with the Lord. Stay in the word and let the word show you how you're walking and let the word show you where you're walking. Okay, hold on. Okay, got a prophetic word. For behold, my people, I want to illuminate some things to you that you've never seen before. I want to open your eyes in brand new ways because there is always a new level with me and in me. So there are some things you haven't seen yet and some things you don't know. Some things you need to be healed from. Some things you need to avoid. So trust in me and stay in my word. Let my word become a light uh, unto your feet, a lamp unto your feet so you can see how you walk. Because if you use my word as your standard, you can see where you are falling short, where you are making mistakes, where you need to course correct. And let my word be a light unto your path so you can see which way to go and how to navigate the giants, the pitfalls, the traps, the temptations. And I will be with you every step of the way, says the Spirit of the living God. Wow, that's encouraging. I'm encouraged by that um, because I want the word to show me how I'm walking and I want the word to show me where I'm walking. But the Lord said there's some new stuff because there's always some new stuff with the Lord. And that's really exciting. So that means we've got to stay in the word because there's some more stuff the Lord wants to show us. See, that's why you have to stay in step with the Lord. That's why you hear me say it all the time. If you are stuck way back somewhere, a two and a five and a 10 and a 20 years ago, you are missing what Jesus is doing now. Let me say that again. If you are stuck or hung up, on where the Lord used to be in your denomination or your church or something that happened in your life. And that something is a two and a five and a 10 and a 20 years old. You are missing what the Lord is doing now because the Lord is doing something now. And not only is he doing something now, he's doing new stuff that you haven't seen before. That's why you hear me saying almost every week now that you got to stay in step with the Lord, with the head of the church. 
The same way your body has to stay in step with your head, we as Christians have to stay in, in step with Jesus because he's doing new stuff. You understand? All right. When you see me close my eyes and you see me speak in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost, is, are there any demons that need to be cast out? Uh, is there any physical healing that needs to happen? Is there any financial word or any other prophetic words? Now, why do I do that? I do that because I believe that we're supposed to get the full package, okay? The full package of what Jesus died to give us. And if you want to know what that looks like, that would be found in Luke 4.18. Luke 4.18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. And verse 19 says, oh wait, no, not verse 19. That was part, them that are bruised. And the next is the next verse. Uh, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's a different version because uh, I'm reading King James Version. But um, that's what I mean when I say uh, the full package. That's why you see me do that. Preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's verse 19. Preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Uh, that's why you hear me say that because that's the full package of God. That's the full package that Jesus died to give us. He, he, he died so that the Holy Ghost can come upon us. He's anointed us because we're not supposed to be poor. Got good news for the poor. That's your money. Heal the brokenhearted. That's your heart, your emotions. The preach deliverance to the captives. That's anything that's got you captive. Debt, sickness, broken body, mental illness, recovering of sight to the blind, physical healing, set at liberty. Them that are bruised, you're in jail to your pain, your scars. That's what it means. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's talking about the year of Jubilee. That's the 50th year that means you get to recover all your stuff. That you don't have to stay in debt or in bondage for the rest of your life, but you get to recover Anything that you lost. That's a year of Jubilee. That, that's what that means. So when you hear me say the full package of the Lord, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, Luke 4, 18. Luke 4, 18 and 19. The full package. Everything Jesus died to give you. Remember I talked about last week about fracturing the unity of Scripture. About how you don't go into a verse and isolate a phrase or isolate a sentence or isolate a verse from a chapter without reading the whole context. Okay? And you don't go in and pick and choose and say, I believe this, but I don't believe that. Okay? So that's what I mean when I say at the end of my broadcast, that's why I ask the Lord, are there any demons that need to be cast out? Is there any word about finances? Is there any word for physical healing? Is there any other prophetic words you want to release? That's what I'm basing it on, Luke 4, 18 and 19, all that stuff I just read. Because we're supposed to get the full benefit that Jesus died to give us, not partial benefits. Okay? Wow, now that's an unusual word. Okay. The Holy Ghost just told me, look for fulfillment this week. Wow. <laughs> He said, look for fulfillment this week. Okay, now that's all he said. Now, there's a lot of different ways I can go. A lot of different ways to take that. But he said, look for fulfillment this week. That means that something that's been coming for a long time is coming this week. That means something that's the desire of your heart is coming this week. Okay, that means something maybe you've been working on for a long time. You're going to finish it this week. But he said, look for fulfillment this week. Now, as you come on. Hey there, Melissa, as you come on to the broadcast, please like and share. Remember I said at the top, uh, well, yeah, you can put your prayer requests up there. I'll be happy to pray. Remember I said at the top of the broadcast, whenever God releases a prophetic word, it, it needs to go around the world because there are people that need to hear it. And the Holy Ghost has told me more than once that some prophetic words will save people's lives. It will stop people from committing suicide. Okay? So please like and share this video. Uh, Melissa, did you disappear? Okay, so if you got a prayer request, go ahead on and put it on the screen right now. If you got a prayer request, put it on the screen right now so we can pray. But the Holy Ghost just told me to look for a fulfillment this week. Now let me see if there's any other words.
Okay? All right, seems good. So, if you got a prayer request, put them on the screen. Um, okay? So, that means something's coming this week that's going to be fulfilling. It's going to be some fulfillment of something. Fulfillment of a promise or completion of a project or a desire of your heart or something has been coming for a long time. That's exciting if you ask me. Okay? All right. So, all right. I'm not seeing any prayer requests. Okay? So, amen. Praise God. All right. So, I want to thank you for joining me for this prophetic word. Remember to go back and watch the uh, video from the beginning so you can uh, catch everything. I'm on, again, every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I'm on the second Thursday of every month at 7 o'clock p.m. with my series entitled No More Genies, where we're getting rid of our genie concept of God and where we're establishing a healthy concept of God based on uh, what the Word actually says instead of a bunch of myth and mythology and what Mama and them said and stuff you may have picked up along the way. No, we want to study what the Bible actually says. That's what that's about, okay? So remember that the Word for this week is that His Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light into our path that we need. That's two lights. We need a lamp. The lamp on your feet is how I'm walking, and the light into my path is where I'm walking. And the Bible says that his word accomplishes both purposes. So we want to keep that in mind as we go forward this week. And the prophetic word that came forth that the Lord said he's got some new stuff, some stuff he wants to show us that we haven't seen before. I can't wait. I'm excited because whenever Jesus says, you got some new stuff to show you. That means he's going to blow your mind. That means the Lord is going to show you some stuff that you didn't even think of. Because whenever the Lord does stuff, it's by revelation. And revelation means, hey, blessings to you. Revelation means he takes the cover off. That's why you can't do it with intellect. A lot of people try to approach their walk with God with human intellect. That's not how it works. You have a brain to navigate this natural world. When you're trying to navigate the things of the spirit, the things of the spirit work like this. Like that. They work like revelation. The Lord literally has to open your eyes and uncover anything that was blocking you from seeing. So when the Lord said he got some new stuff to show you with that kind of prophetic word from Jesus, that means he's going to give you some revelation. He's going to do this. He's going to open your eyes some, to some stuff that you've never seen before. Haven't you ever been in a situation where the Lord re reveals something to you about you? <laughs> And it's something that maybe you've been dealing with a long time. Maybe something you've been carrying a long time. Maybe it's been a part of your life for so long. You just got used to it. And then you found out you don't have to carry it. <laughs> you found out that's not really you. It's a scar or a burden or something you need to heal from or something you need to forgive. And it just completely blows your whole mind. You see what I mean? Same thing is true if you forgive. If you forgive somebody you've been mad at a long time, by the time you forgive them, because they probably have forgotten. But by the time you forgive them, you will literally feel a burden and a weight lift off of your soul. It's the most amazing thing. And I found out that's true even when you forgive yourself. Sometimes you've been mad at yourself about something for a long time. God forgave you a long time ago and you're still carrying it. When the Lord shows you that, then when you truly forgive yourself, there's this weight that lifts. Um, so anyway, so that's the way it works in the kingdom. It works by revelation. Jesus has to do that. He's got to uncover your eyes. You can't do it with intellect. You can't do it with sight. You can't do it with your natural eyes. You can't do it with your natural mind. This has to happen. And only Jesus can do that for you. Awake from the dead, thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give thee light. Only the Lord can do that, okay? So go back and watch this video from the top so you get all of the teaching and the prophetic words about our text, which was Psalm 119, 105. The prophetic word was light my path. And then a whole bunch of other prophetic words prophetic words came forth, okay? So I'm excited. I'm super excited. So amen. Thank you. God bless you. So if you need to watch this replay, it's on Facebook Live on my Facebook page, which is Prophet David Taylor. It's on my, my Twitter, which is PDTSOTC. It's on my Periscope, which is Prophet David Taylor. And in about an hour, hour and a half, it'll be on my YouTube channel, which is also Prophet David Taylor, because you're going to need to watch this one from the top to get everything that the Lord said today, okay? All right, amen, God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know I appreciate it. And, and I'm just happy to be a part of God's program, a part of God's kingdom, all right? God bless you. Have a great week, and I will see you same time next week.